Margaret awoke, startled, a cold sweat clinging to her. She gathered her thoughts. Aged wood creaked, echoing through the quiet rooms. Near the house stood a shrine to Rhea Dana, goddess and daughter of the land, of Rhea and a being of comfort. Margaret sought answers. But the goddess did not speak. There was only the faint whisper of something dark, something hungry. The old seer's bones felt the weight of their age as she climbed. The only thought on her mind, has it begun again? John's mission would be a simple one. He was to investigate Rhea's greatest shrine. His mother presented him with a fresh divinity shard. From his brother came a newly sharpened sword. His wife gave him a kiss, and his daughter's hugs were full of reason to return home safe. A land long forgotten, a place of unimaginable beauty. It first appeared as sludge given life, slithering creatures, small and vile.
A wall impeding further progress. A battle was certain. itself. The corruption abated, leaving the shard cold in hand, dark in need of life. The shard grew warm, humming softly from the harnessed energy. Before him was now one more dangerous than those that came before. Goblins, a familiar threat, albeit farther out than usual. <laughs> Inherently violent and ill-bathed, the goblins were an unfocused and constant threat. Magnificent and dangerous, a land of love found and of love lost. Before him was sacred ground, left untouched in days gone by. Remaining calm and collected, the shock of his heart skipping beats was concealed in expert fashion. Before him stood Linda, his eldest daughter, with bow and quiver at the ready determined to do her part.
Before the Guardians were not beasts feeding, but monsters consuming, destroying others, they corrupted and distorted, creating even more hungry husks. Both father and daughter gathered their thoughts, their hearts heavier than before. How would they explain what they had witnessed? The ancient tree had been cut down. Together, father and daughter described the horror, the creatures dripping with decay that slithered into bodies stuck between life and death to bolster their ranks. Grandma Margaret confirmed what they all feared. It was the corruption. A cruel entity spoken of only with hushed voices. An ocean of darkness that flowed from the top of Mount Morta. And the Bergson's duty was to stand against this devouring deluge of death. Kevin was also eager to do his part in the family's fight, especially when his older brother Mark was off somewhere. He was as much a guardian of their mountain home as any of them. She stood. If they were to reach the summit and destroy this evil, as the Bergsons of old had done in the past, they would need the assistance of the Sanctuary. Given to the Bergsons by Rhea herself, the sanctuary was a gateway to the mysterious lands around the mountain. Margaret pointed to the huge crystal at the center of the den, revealing their next task, to activate it and open the way to the source of the corruption. And once Rhea's three spirits are gathered on the grounds, the only gate to the top of Mount Morta will open in this chamber. By himself, or with the assistance of those who loved him, John needed to gather the three spirits from their lands. Without them, he would not be able to stem the flow of the corruption. of Anaya Daya must be here, for she needs to be found.
celestial shard chipped directly from the ancient crystal in the sanctuary. It would be the Berkson's lifeline, a tether to pull them back home before death's fateful whisper. Filling the winding tunnels of the silk-covered caves, the acrid taste of poison lingered in the air. Spiders. Linda told herself it was only target practice. As she readied her bow, they must find the spirit deep within the caves. A table fit for the gods, but a game made for mortals. A hand was to be placed upon the pedestal, and their best was to be given.
Energy flowed around the room. Before the hero, an object of the divine.
She flaunted her wings, begging to be chased. Do not linger. Further she fled. The Bergson began to slip away, wondering if this was death. Bellagio fled further. gasped for air as the celestial shard brought them back, a sensation no hero could become accustomed to. As she heard John and Linda describe their foray, thoughts rushed through Margaret's head. The corruption had amplified the creature's wickedness and no longer were they part of the harmony of the Rhea. With the new threats looming, Margaret asked Ben to prepare his workshop. He would have to take charge of enhancing the warrior family's weapons and armor. Ben reached out to the familiar warmth of the forge. If they were to reach the top of Mount Water, their equipment would need to be of the highest quality. She knew where it was coming from. Her ancestors had spoken of such corruption flooding down the mountain. But Grandma Margaret wanted to know what it was and what needed to be done to destroy it. When light faded from the sky and most were fast asleep, Mary would write about her family immortalizing them for future generations.
pilgrims, once lost in cavern mazes, were now trapped. Their poor families forever looking forward to a return that will never happen. The halls of Anea Dyer, so mesmerizing in their magnificence, were to be found at the end of a long road. And a hero never knows what is awaiting them at the end of a road. Moving is more important than reaching. Can this be? Is he lost? muttered Margaret under her breath. Lost in the study of the walls and oblivious to her surroundings.
she always had time for her children, but it was best to leave Grandma to her pursuits now. In front of the hero, an object of divine energies. Eight eyes studied the one so willing to walk into their own tomb. 